This is uh, Lone Wolf on the Lone Wolf and Cub Variety Show, Episode 2, Attack of the Pop Cultures. Uh, we're kind of doing a little Star Wars spinoff there. No copyright infringement, no intention whatsoever. Uh, we're just... Uh, we're just titling in that today. Uh, we will be dropping this on YouTube as soon as this is done recording live. And uh, sorry, that was the relay there. Um, a little behind. Uh, and I will respond live to uh, any questions, anything like that. And then that will get uh, posted up to YouTube. Uh, so here we are. It's Lone Wolf and Cub, episode two. Uh, the attack of... Uh, the pop cultures, and I just want to welcome everybody to the show. Uh, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. We got a lot of cool stuff today. We're going to be talking about uh, a couple things on sports. We're going to be talking about game reviews, uh, what's going to be going on in, in my streaming community and upcoming releases. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about some manga, about some uh, band, uh, band Presto figurine, and uh, a couple Funko Pops, and... I am going to have a reveal of a Funko I just ordered. It was a Hot Topic exclusive, I believe. I, it, I apologize if it's not. If it's a different exclusive, maybe GameStop. Uh, I have so many Funkos pre-ordered uh, exclusive. Sometimes I lose track of them, but I'm pretty sure I know which the, what, what this one is. Uh, but we'll see. I believe it's a Dragon Ball figure, but I'm going to unbox it live for you guys to see. And we'll review that figure right there out the gate. I, I don't take the figures out the box, though. Uh, you know, try and keep the value, you know, damaging the box, all that. I, I'm, I'm anal retentive when it comes to collecting. Uh, so to kick it off, you know, welcome to the show. Uh, if you haven't checked the first episode out, please, you know, if, if you enjoy it. If you catch episode two and you like episode two, go back and watch episode one. Or, you know, if you like episode two, you don't want to go back and watch episode one. We'll be dropping episode three on Saturday next week. Uh, Saturday, I'll be streaming uh, the live web show and then posting it on YouTube, just like the, these previous two episodes. Uh, you know, uh, first, I want to just start off. I hope everybody uh, is staying safe. I hope your families are safe. You're safe. You you all are practicing the social distancing. Uh, the more we practice that, I believe the quicker we'll be done with all this. Uh, but we we've got to we've got to try and quarantine ourselves and, and stay safe and, and practice you know uh, san sanitary practices. Uh, so I I hope and I, I pray that you know you all are staying safe. And in this time of crisis and hecticness and, uh, you know, we just all got to stick together on this and, uh, we should get through this. And, and, and I believe it's a real eye opener that the world really needed, uh, in some ways that we need to be more united, that it's not about race, religion, creed, sexual orientation. This is about where we're the human race and we need to be all in this all together because the more that we're in this together, the better we're going to be in the long run. And I believe we've lost touch with that. But that's my viewpoint. Uh, moving forward, uh, I'll start off, uh, you know, let's start off on a good note. And uh, I'll review, uh, like on the previous episode, I did a Bam Presto, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Vegito. Uh, this one I've had for a little bit, but it's a very popular figure. They have a second edition now of this figure. Mine's the first edition. So it doesn't have the replaceable uh, emote heads, as I call them, like different emotions. They have different heads you can put on this figure. But you guys will probably know them if you're an anime fan or dabble in anime lightly. Uh, you know, it's uh, Izuku Midoriya from My Hero Academia. And he is a Banpresto uh, Grandista figure. Get a good view of him. And he is a spectacularly uh, detailed figure. I mean, even down to the bottom of the treads on his feet. Um, and he has his little kickstand, uh, like all the figures. But as you can see, I, I'll take this off. He stands just fine uh, without it. Um, most of these figures... Another thing, I don't, I don't think a lot of you know, that most of these figures... Uh, they come in like pieces like this and you just assemble them real quick 
Um, and, and I like that they're like that. It's very convenient as per the expensive ones. They're like one solid piece. Uh, the, the, the reason I like that is for, you know, if you got to move, you got to transport it or whatever, it makes it very convenient, uh, for packing. Um, you know, and I saved the plastic in the boxes and everything for storage purposes. And, but, uh, it's a great figure if you're a My Hero Academia fan, which is probably next, you know, I think it's neck and neck now with Demon Slayer and My Hero because of Demon Slayer coming out with their just finishing their first season um in the popularity of the manga and then of course my hero i mean it's it's huge uh, i believe it just surpassed in sales i think it i'm pretty sure it surpassed one piece in in manga sales uh a couple months ago i believe i could be incorrect on that but i i swear i remember reading something on that but yeah we got our main protagonist and hero deku uh a.k.a. Izuka Midoriya, you know, uh, heir to one for, uh, one for all, and, uh, there he is, Bam Presto Grandista figure, and the thing is, is that I like about this, because most Grandista figures are about 11 and a half inches to 13 and a half, he's actually only about 10 and a half. Which is kind of cool because, you know, proportionately, I think they're getting prepared to release an All Might Grandista, which if they do, I'll be hopping all over that to have him with uh, Deku. Uh, but the nice part is, is that, you know, size comparison, because I have a, a Rono Zoro, um, a Gogeta uh, that I haven't shown yet. He may, those may pop up in future episodes uh, if you guys request. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I like how they proportioned him in the Grandista series and shortened him down because he's a shorter character. So it's, uh, pretty cool. And for Sailor Moon fans out there, it'd be pretty hilarious if they did a, did a, uh, rainy, uh, Chibi Moon. <laughs> she'd probably be like a five, she'd probably be the first like five inch Grandista, uh, <laughs> figure. But, or, or a Konamaru, uh, Konamaru. Uh, from uh, Naruto, he would be kid version, kid version, upper Baruto version. Uh, but he would be a small one. He'd probably be under six inches as a grandista. But yeah, beautiful figure. Uh, nice, you know, nice desktop figure. Uh, check them out. Get a chance. Uh, I I get all my merchandise from Joy's Japan Animation. It's located in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. They also have a website. So if you want to check them out, please, I encourage. Uh, check them out. Show some support. Very fair pricing, too. But, so there you go. Kicked it off with a figure. Um, next, we're going to talk about some manga. Uh, I wanted to introduce you guys. Uh, most of you guys all watch Netflix, um, and especially in the, in, at this time, a lot of people were watching Netflix in the world. Uh, they did a release, a CGI animated film called Gantz Zero, and that's the manga I'm about to show you. It's called Gantz. Uh, they did a 24-episode anime, I believe it was, 24, 25, 26-episode anime. Unfortunately, like, the last four episodes of the anime weren't... They tried to finish off the story of Gantz, which it wasn't even close to being finished at that point in time, and then also it lost funding and all that. Uh, so, unfortunately, it never got finished in anime form. The manga did finish uh, about four or five years ago. In America, in Japan, it was like, I, I think like six years ago. Uh, but now they have been re-releasing uh, the Omnibuses, and I believe they're up to volume four now. I have one and two. I've read the whole series. I originally had the whole entire single manga volume set. Uh, I believe it went up to volume 36, 37, somewhere in there. Uh, but it is a uh, great story. If you're looking for an adult-oriented, uh, not, not hentai when I say adult, uh, adult oriented with, you know, deep storyline, uber violence, science fiction, love, romance, death, destruction, uh, shoot 'em ups, if you want to call it, uh, futuristic, uh, mission oriented. This is the, uh, manga slash anime for you. Now, if you watch the anime, don't watch it past episode 19 or 20, and you'll know what episode mark I'm talking about, because a whole bunch of shit hits the fan. From there, you just gotta drop it and pick up the manga, because the last four or five episodes of the series is, is unbearable to me. It's unbearable, knowing the full story of what the manga is and all the content that they left out. 
Um, hopefully this gets picked up someday and somebody reanimates it. My God, if I had the money and I was an animator and I had the artistic ability, I would do it myself. Uh, because I know it would be successful in this day and age. Um, but it, it, it's it's a well-written story. Um, very deep. Uh, very violent. But it uh, it fits in this day and age. And Hiroya Oku is the author. And you can see his name right there. Uh, but this is Omnibus 1. I have Omnibus 1 and 2. Um, and if you get a chance... Uh, look into it, especially at this time. You know, if you're looking for reading material, I think you can get these things under $15. I got mine from Joyce Japan Animation once again. It's where I get a lot of my merchandise from. Uh, it, but, you know, a highly recommended read. Uh, and you should definitely check it out. If you, I don't want to give away anything because if I start talking about it, it's going to give it away. Now, if you've seen Gantz Zero on Netflix, the CGI film... Uh, unfortunately, and it was a really good arc that they did on that film. That is straight from the pages of the manga, uh, that film that's on Netflix, Gantz Zero. Uh, but the sad part is, is it's like right in the middle of the, the series. It's a, it's a big pivotal turning point of the events that happened before that and the events that happened after that in the manga. Uh, so if you've seen Gantz Zero, uh, you've already dabbled in Gantz, and if you enjoyed it, you're gonna enjoy the manga. And like I said, the anime is just as good. I mean, the, the animation for it was a little it was it was a little ahead of its time for the animation uh, that it had when it came out. Um, and uh, check it out, you know, uh, it wouldn't hurt. It's a good read. Uh, you can also get it online uh, if you have uh, you know uh, Kindle. Uh, what do they call fire tablets? Uh, I think, uh, but you can get a, you can get the 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 net version too, um, which is cheaper than the actual print version, of course. Uh, at probably under ten dollars, I believe. Uh, but yeah, you can get these fifteen twenty bucks. It's three volumes of the manga, and uh, all compiled into one. And uh, let me see, I'll find a good page for you here. Let me see. Yeah, here. We'll just show you, like, the death and destruction. <laughs> Not revealing anything, but as you see there, there's a pile of bodies with blood splurting out of their necks and heads. So if you like stuff like that, you'll definitely uh, enjoy Gantz. Uh, so hopefully you guys ch check it out. Um, so another thing, which I'll be very excited. Now, they just announced, officially, unofficially, they are doing Season 5 of My Hero Academia, which they should. Uh, I mean, they, they're they they're pretty decently, especially by next year when it would come out, they're pretty decently ahead in the manga uh, that they still don't need to hit us with any fillers, which it's a, it's a hope uh, that there's no fillers. Uh, I really hope there's no fillers because My Hero Academia doesn't need filler. Uh, but this is a My Hero Academia spinoff story, and this is volume one. They're up to volume seven now. I, I've, I've read all the way up to volume four. I have up to volume six, but I believe seven just came out uh, not too long ago. But this is volume one. Uh, it's made uh, by Show and Jump Viz Media. Uh, Vigilantes takes place when... How would I explain it? If you know the hero, uh, or hero, how would you suck? The female hero, Midnight, and you know Eraserhead and Fat Gum. It is when it was like their first years of being heroes. Now, All Might was already out, but it's it's the side story of Koichi uh, Hamawari. And that's Koichi right there. I'm not going to reveal who this guy is here. But as you can see, there's All Might in the background. And there's Midnight. And Best Genus, Endeavor. Um, Eraserhead. Uh, oh, I forget the speaker guy. Uh, Killer Orca. Uh, or Gang Orca, Gang Orca. If you're a fan of My Hero Academia, and I hope that they announce an animation for this because it's such a great prelude side story. Like, it really has nothing to do with All Might. It's just about other lower tier P 
people who want to be heroes that didn't make the cut. And there's a lot of interaction from characters that are present in the series now. And it gives you more background on why they are the way they are. Especially Midnight and Eraserhead and I, Loudspeaker, I think he's called, or something like that. Uh, I can't, I always forget his name. But it, it's a great series. Hopefully, hopefully, we'll keep our fingers crossed. If you pick up the first volume, you'll be hooked. If you love My Hero Academia, you're going to love Vigilantes. Uh, it's a key essential, and if they animate it, which I think they will because of the mass popularity of My Hero, and I think that that maybe should be the direction that they go if they run into the issue that they're caught up to the manga in My Hero, the main line, they could always bounce around and do a season of Vigilantes and rotate. You know, do one season of Vigilantes, one season of, um, um, you know, baseline My Hero. Uh, keep the fans interested and hooked. Uh, but excellent, excellent read. Uh, My Hero Academia, if you're a fan, this is the one for you. Uh, to, to, to curve your withdrawal from My Hero Academia, because you're going to have to wait another year, before, maybe even longer, because of, uh, you know, COVD-19. But uh, check it out. Highly recommended. Uh, another thing on My Hero Academia, and this is the last manga we're going to review. If you guys are wondering if you now are fiending for My Hero Academia and you're hurting bad and you, and you cannot wait a year and you want to know what's going on in the story after season four ended, pick up volume uh, 20. About halfway through volume 20 is where season four ends. Uh, so I would recommend picking up Volume 20 to get half that content. I mean, it's just that last part where, where the festival ends and also uh, with General Criminal uh, kind of closing that out. Uh, that's what Volume 20 is, but then Volume 21 picks up. And this guy here is Hawks. Uh, he's in the top 10 heroes. I'm not going to tell you about him. He's a great, interesting, uh, intricate character. There's still, you know, you got to wonder about this guy and you'll see what I mean if you pick this up, but this is volume, uh, 21 and, uh, we see our main boy Endeavor there and he's got a new uniform. He's a little beat up. I'm not going to say why, but the cool part about volume 21 is there is a battle between Endeavor and this guy. And if you're a fan, you know who this guy is. It's Dobby, who controls Black Flames. And then, of course, you have uh, Endeavor, Shoto Todoroki's dad, uh, which there is a rumor that Dobby is actually Shoto's older brother. But we don't know yet. And there's still lots of time for that to be revealed in the manga because uh, the creator, uh, Koi uh, Hirokoshi, Horikoshi, uh, announced that we're almost about at the midway point, so we've got about another anywhere between three to five years before it's going to be done in the serialization. Uh, not serialization, I mean anime, sorry, I apologize. In the print, uh, we've got about three to five years uh, before we're, we're going to be all finished up. Now, that could get extended, that could get shortened. A lot of the time, these, these manga creators and artists, it fluctuates. Uh, in, in, in great meaning, Titty Kubo, uh, the creator of Bleach, is one of the perfect examples. And I cannot think of Neon Genesis Evangelion's creator right now at the moment. And I know it because I'm a diehard fan. And I just am brain farting because Cub <laughs> has been a little brutal the past couple of days. And that's why I'm kind of groggy, too, if you're wondering why my voice is a little groggy. She's just been a little rough. Uh, but, yeah, so if you wanted to pick up Right when season four ended, pick up volume 20, and this is volume 21 and onward. They're up to 23 now. Uh, they're about to release 24. Um, and that'll give you uh, some great content. Uh, and when the new season comes out, the crazy part is is that you won't have to watch the new season unless there's some filler in there that, that that's new. Uh, you'll know what happens because they literally go frame frame for frame pretty much line for line almost from the manga, just like most majority serializations of mangas uh, to television is, is nine times out of 10. That's how it works. Except we get filler, uh, which filler I nine times out of 10, I hate filler. And uh, I don't know if all of you feel the same way out there, but filler episodes 
uh, are terrible. And to let the community know, if you don't know what a filler episode is, what a filler episode is, is when they run out of content or they're caught up to the original content and there's no new content to proceed forward with on the main true storyline, what the creators of the show then do, they create like a scenario, a a made-up villain that's not in the manga, that's made exclusively for the television show, and they do, you know, a little arc, as as we call them in anime, they do an arc uh, that's a filler arc. You know, it could be some some villain. It could be some stupid little vacation they go on for four episodes. And, you know, there's a mystery Scooby-Doo villain. You know, there's all kinds of different scenarios. But that's what filler episode is, if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say filler. Uh, to to fill you in, no pun intended. Um, so... We will, I'm going to step off camera real quick, grab this uh, Funko Pop I have yet to open, and we will open it live. So, yes, so this says Vienna Pop 24 on the tag, Uh, but that tag, if you see right there, it says Vienna Pop 24, um... Nine times out of ten, I can tell where it comes from, from the print and the font. And this looks like a hot topic, so I think I'm pretty sure I was right on that. Um, okay, yes, I do remember ordering this from a hot topic. But the crazy part is, is that it is a Funko 2020 Spring Convention Limited Edition Exclusive. Which I know they don't even have a book value on this yet because they dropped a lot of these figures too. Uh, This one did get released because Dragon Ball Z is one of the bigger lines that they have on uh, on Funko. Uh, But it glows in the dark and if you are a Dragon Ball collector this is a must have. And especially if you're just a Funko collector in general because that sticker... Considering what's going on in the world and if everything turns out all right, this is going to be a figure that's probably worth a little more than your average uh, convention limited edition exclusives. Uh, One, because it's glow in the dark. Two, because it's a 2020 spring convention. And guess what? There's just no 2020 spring convention if you know that (laughs) and you you know what's going on in the world, which you should. And if you don't, uh, (laughs) I I don't know uh, what to tell you on that. But uh, it's a beautiful figure. Uh, It actually looks a lot better in person than they advertise it online. But it is perfect sell. Um. And he's got the electricity bolts, as you see, all around him. That's a really gorgeous figure. He's going to light up really good. Maybe I'll take some pics or something, post it on uh, on the thread, on Mixer, or on on my YouTube. I'll get a picture for you guys or some footage of what this bad boy looks like, uh, glow in the dark. Because some glow in the darks that they have in Funko are spectacular, and then other ones are duds. Uh, I've learned that it's really hit or miss with the -the glow-in-the-dark figures. And from my understanding, speaking to another collector, the better your figure glows in the dark, the more it's actually worth. Um, Because I guess it has to do with, like, the coating. Sometimes it takes, sometimes it doesn't take. Other, You know, it it just depends, I guess. I, I I don't understand, but... That's just how it is. But yeah, that sticker right there is going to make this, especially because of what's going on in the world. And there's no 2020 spring convention now uh, for Funko. Um, This is going to be a little bit of a higher end figure. And I got it off Hot Topic for $14.99 plus tax and I think like $2 for shipping. So it was under $20. Uh, You can get this bad boy. But if you already have the regular cell, you're definitely going to want this cell because this is technically the true perfect cell because if you know he absorbed Goku's instant transmission and that is when he comes back and just starts wrecking shit and says screw it I'm gonna kill y'all now with a Kamehameha and then as you know Gohan uses the old one-handed Kamehameha father-son Kamehameha and uh, trashes him with the help of Vegeta my boy thank you very much the true The true prince and king of Saiyans. Screw Goku. Vegeta's the dad dude. Uh, But (laughs) anyways, long story short, uh, this is a 
Beautiful figure. I'm glad I got to unbox it in front of you guys. Uh, I've seen videos of people doing that. I've never got to do that, so it's pretty cool. But uh, that's perfect sell. The 2020 Funko uh, Spring Convention uh, exclusive limited edition. So if you get them, good for you. Uh, he, he's good to have in the collection. I'm glad I have him for my collection. I, I don't like sell, though. That's the funny part. I despise him. He's probably one of my most hated villains. Like, not like, oh, I hate him, he's so evil. Like, no, I hate him, like, he looks stupid. And I, like, I love the androids and all of that, but then whenever Cell got into the mix, it was like, all right, this is too much. And he was too corny, and there was a lot of, uh, how would I say it, with the whole tail, vor eating female with a tail phallus like yeah, just getting along the lines of henshi to me to me but uh yeah that's another reason i just detest him i think he's a, a a wasteful wasteful villain um so next we're gonna uh by request of uh by the way i want to thank uh darth teddy bear and uh x chronic x grime x uh I wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for those two streamers. Uh, if you see my thread on uh, Mixer, uh, you can see them on there. They're always talking on my thread. Uh, Darth is all caps. Replace the A's in Teddy Bear and Darth with the number four and put an underscore in between the name and it's all caps. Um, and it's Darth Teddy Bear. And then Chronic X grime chronic is you know uh capital c chronic lowercase x in the front of chronic lowercase x in between chronic capital g grime g-r-i-m-e and then another lowercase x that is chronics uh, and he's got well over a thousand uh followers on mixer he's a very up and coming well-known streamer so definitely check him out show him some love and support because if you enjoy my content excuse me I learned from both of these guys and they got me to where I'm at now and you know I want to return the favor to them and, and let you guys know about them uh, because they're they're phenomenal they are phenomenal uh, Darth hasn't been able to be on uh, very much because he has an essential job right now considered in the world an essential job so uh, you're not going to be able to check him out too often but I do know when the D DLC for Kakarot uh, drops, which is huge, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, I know who I know he'll make he'll he'll make time to be on there. So look for his streams. I know he'll be definitely making time for that. And I, I believe we're getting that in a couple weeks. Uh, hopefully in a couple weeks, especially now what's going on in the world. Let's you know, hopefully they keep giving us some fresh material. Xbox Game Pass has been doing phenomenal, and PlayStation has been stepping up to the plate as well. I'm waiting to see what Switch is going to do with their Nintendo eShop. See if they give us any good deals, good content. I know there's a lot of good stuff coming out that's already been on previous consoles, but now you'll be able to have it handheld on Switch. Uh, one of them being Outer Worlds, uh, which was a phenomenal game from the creators of, uh, you know, Fallout and all that. Um, but by request, what I was getting at, uh, Chronic, uh, I believe it was Chronic, Chronic or Darth or, or maybe it was the Rabbi. I can't remember. One of the three had requested if I had any other Naruto figures. I do have a bunch of other Naruto Funko Pop figures. I'm only going to show two today. Uh, so we can drag it out for other episodes to keep you guys incited and enticed so you can see some of these exclusive rare figures uh, that are out there for Naruto because Naruto is just as big as My Hero Academia, Dragon Ball Z, One Piece. Uh, but to move on to that subject, we'll move on to my main boy. I got him tattooed on me. Everybody loves him. Was thought to be a villain for a long time. I still have plastic hanging on my acid free in case I didn't get all the plastic off of it but anyways long story short it kind of looks cruddy a little cruddy uh, this was an AE uh, exclusive and right now this figure is valued I believe at $48 either $38 or $48 uh, he's a little bit harder to find yeah he's not high in value right now he will go up as time goes on most figures do uh, I have seen figures, though, be really high and then drop down to nothing, and they're still worth nothing. 
Uh, but the big thing is, is you got to sit on these guys if you want them to accumulate any value. And I mean, I'm talking years. You have to sit on them to build up and accumulate value. And this is what's going to build your value is exclusive stickers like that. Um, not all, not all, but the more diverse range that you can get of exclusive, the better, better chance you're going to have a gem in your collection. And the anime... Uh, figures that they have and honestly in the past year and a half now I got into Funko about three years ago and at that time I mean they had a good about anime characters uh, Funkos but Dragon Ball Z was the biggest line now my hero is just a, almost as big as as uh, the Dragon Ball line and you have the One Piece line which supposedly more figures are coming out for that I really hope so because all they really have the hardest one that gets Brooke Brooke is the only one I don't have Brooke's valued at like 150 and nobody's selling them cheaper than that which sucks because I have every crew member but Brooke and my Mrs. Wolf loves Brooke and Frankie those are her two favorite characters she actually found Frankie for me so I'm glad I got Frankie in in the collection and I mean if you watch the true Japanese version who doesn't love Frankie going super but uh anyways back to the figure we have the Itachi Uchiha with the Shanganai uh in the Akatsuki uh garb and it is an AE exclusive uh, and that is the Tachi Achiha figure number 578 on the pop animation line if you wanted to search them down in the app or just type in Itachi Achiha. Um Beautiful figure. I mean, the, the level of detail. They've even got his Akatsuki ring and, and with the redstone and the, and the kanji on it. Uh, the the level of detail that they are getting into these pops now is phenomenal. And if you want to look, like his his Sharingan eye is spectacular. And you can see his ring, his fingernails are painted, that purple that he has. Um, even his toenails are painted, if you can see that. I mean, it, the level of detail on these figures, even though they're like blown up and made really animation-y, uh, is phenomenal, and uh, who does it, if you're a Naruto fan, or anime fan, and watch Naruto, if you don't like Itachi, I don't know how you couldn't, or if you didn't pull at your heartstrings when you found out, you know, uh, who he really was, and what he was about, uh, I don't know, I guess you're just not human, and you have no emotion, <laughs> I guess that's, a, I mean, that's my opinion on it, but it's a great figure to have uh, from the Shippuden uh, line, and uh, and I love them. And also to announce, and I had showed the last episode, Seventh Hokage Naruto. They have a Baruto line now too, um, which I'll be having a Naruto Shippuden figure coming in soon, and I will unbox that on one of the future episodes. And it's a, it's a six inch Funko, so it's a bigger one. Uh, which is very exciting. The other Naruto figure that I'm going to reveal. Now, this guy's sitting at $50 right now. Um, he is a harder one. As I've looked most recently, he's a harder one. And everybody seems to be selling him uh, what he is worth on uh, Funko Pop Price Guide. F uh, FPPG or PPG. Um, pop price guide. Uh, he's going for about 50, but they just started this. The first anime moments that came out was from Cowboy Bebop with uh, Vicious and uh, Spike Spiegel. Uh, the final battle between them uh, with Spike holding the gun and Vicious with the sword. Uh, I will show that. It's called The Battle of the Fallen Angels, which that was also the title of the episode. I will show that one to you. That is the first in the anime moments line. Uh, that came out, and if you see this, this is the final battle between Sasuke and Naruto. I mean, they even gave Naruto the Shiner, and, and, and it, I mean, it is to a T. And if you see Sasuke there, he has the Mangekyou Sharingan. I mean, it is just phenomenal figure in detail and recreation of that pivotal scene uh that it all culminated to that final battle between sasuke and naruto uh you know brothers from other mothers 
trying to kill each other. <laughs> and Naruto just would not give up on my boy Sasuke. And, uh, like, gotta love Naruto for that, man. He, he redeemed them and brought them back. And, uh, so it's, it's, it's a great figure if you're a fan of anime and especially a fan of Naruto. Uh, get this bad boy. Uh, I will I will never take this out of the box. It'll get sold someday. Help pay for Cubs College Fund or car or whatever she wants. Uh, but uh, beautiful figure. And Oh, and by the way, it's uh, only a GameStop exclusive. Now, I believe they're sold out on GameStop. But like I said, you can go on Amazon, eBay, uh, Big Apple Collectibles, uh, Shuri.com. Uh, which, if you watched the last episode, that's who I got the uh, the battle arm, uh, battle arm, battle damaged, uh, all for one from My Hero Academia. Uh, but yeah, those four websites will definitely have this guy. You're gonna probably be paying close to fifty dollars or a little over fifty for this guy now instead of uh, twenty four ninety nine. But he's worth it. They're worth it. If you want it, get it. So, move on from that. As we all know, in the video gaming world, we had the re-release and remake of Resident Evil 3. And I actually acquired these figures. They were hand-me-downs to me, uh, to a buddy of mine. He mainly collects Walking Dead Funkos, and he had these randomly in there. And he just uh, gave them to me as a birthday present. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, all three of these figures are, I believe they're almost vaulted or about to be vaulted. And if you don't know what vaulted means, vaulted means that they will not uh, remake this figure. They will not reproduce this figure. It's vaulted away in the vault. If they do make a, a, a recreation, it'll be known as a reprint and they'll rebrand it, rebox it. But uh, these guys are almost vaulted or are vaulted. I'll have to double check on the updates, but we'll go back. We'll start with uh, Resident Evil 2 slash Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil 6 uh, appearance of someone. And who doesn't love Leon S. Kennedy? And that is Leon from uh, Resident Evil 4. You can tell by the outfit, the jacket, brown jacket. When he's working for the government. Uh, beautiful figure. Like I said, these guys, and if you can see, I actually want to go back and get these three guys here. They have the six inch Hunter, Tyrant, and Liquor. I want to go back and get them. Uh, now that I have these three, I want the other three to the series to finish it out. Uh, but awesome. I hope they make some more. For the remakes, it would be really cool. And I think that's why they're vaulting them. Because they'll have to make a new Leon. They'll have to make a new uh, Jill. Um, and a new Nemesis. Because Nemesis doesn't look the same now. I, li I like the new design though. The new design on Nemesis. Which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but it's a great figure. Uh, pretty. And like I said, it's around 40 bucks. Uh, you're going to probably be paying for them. You might get lucky on eBay. And find something a little, a little less. Uh, next, we'll go to our hero from Resident Evil 1, Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. Uh, she was in Resident Evil 5 and Resident Evil Revelations 1. Uh, and that is the classic stars outfit. And if you see, it even says like the level of detail on these figures. It, you know, stars special tas tastics and uh Special Tactics and Rescue Squad. <laughs> That's what STARS stands for, if you didn't know. Uh, but it's Jill Valentine. I mean, and even if you're not a fan or haven't partaken in the last two remakes of 2 and 3, uh, and you're a fan of the originals, this is a great figure to have. It's a beautiful figure, classic outfit. I remember having the toys, the action figures that were like this big when I was a kid, and they came in two packs, like, you'd get a hero, and then a monster with them, and, like, I had Jill, Jill, this Jill came with, like, I think a spider, one of the tarantula, a big spider, spit out ooze, and all this, it, they were cool figures, I, I believe they were made by McFarlane, too, I'll have to look into that, but, man, if I still had those figures, man, they were cool, man, they had guns, and all, all the little gizmos and gadgets, I mean, tiny, too, 
but uh, awesome figures, uh, an awesome figure, and previous awesome figures, if you, you get to find them, look up 1998, 1999 Resident Evil 5-inch action figures, grab them, because they're hot in the collector world, especially now with the remakes and the movies coming out, and then now Netflix remaking a new Resident Evil series uh, starting from scratch and supposedly it's going to take place at the Spencer, Spencer Mansion uh, which will be exciting to see if they actually do stars if they do I, I think Netflix can pull it off with the success of The Witcher uh, you know now there's this video game content you know Ready Player One uh, you have The Witcher that came out and then Sonic the Hedgehog which I'll talk about in a little bit but we got Jill and then this bad boy, who could forget him? Your main villain from Resident Evil 3, good old Nemesis. And and the villain slash kind of anti-hero in uh, Resident Evil 2, the movie. Um, but yeah, he's got his rocket launcher, looking greasy as ever. Gotta love him. Uh, he's a little higher, he's closer to 50. Uh and he may even be jumped up even more now because of the popularity of the remake. Uh, but there you go. There's Nemesis, number 157 in the Pop Games collection. He's number 157. Uh, beautiful figure. Ugly. I like it. So, uh, moving on, we're going to talk about, of course, we're going to talk about Resident Evil um, uh, we're, we're, we're going to talk about Resident Evil 3. So I have played Resident Evil 3. I did do a stream, premiere stream at midnight. Only did it for a half hour. I was really tired. Um, but the next day I did stream a very good bit of it. Uh, we're pretty much comparatively, I'm saying comparatively to the original Resident Evil 3 Nemesis in the remake. I know I'm very close to the end. I'm actually at the hospital right now. Um, We'll be finishing that up hopefully today or tomorrow in the next, you know, next two to three days. Uh, Mrs. Wolf has a couple days off, so I'll be getting a lot more content and get my hours caught up for you guys uh, so you can get to see that. Uh, but yeah, so all in all, uh, great remake, uh, rendered very well. Uh, the character models are refreshing. I, I love, I, I love seeing the, these characters that when I was a kid, they were kind of like polygoned, uh, and I thought those was the best graphics ever back then. Um, but now seeing them where it's like they're almost look like real people, uh, it's refreshing to see it like that. And uh, I think they did great with Jill's model and uh, Nikolai and uh, Carlos. Nemesis, I all I have to say about Nemesis kudos to you Capcom uh it was a fresh idea instead of having them in that leather that 90s leather you know greasy bad guy outfit you turned around flipped the script and put them in a body bag and like as you go on through the game the body bag's like melting more and ripping away and it's like grafted to his skin it's so cool and disgusting and so resident evil uh and there are a couple you know, I, I'm not one of those gamers to scream much. I'll, I'll be more like, oh, shit, you know. Uh, definitely a couple of those moments so far, more so towards Nemesis than, you know, dogs and Hunter, Hunter Gammas and Betas uh, <laughs> and Zombies it is more, more, more with Nemesis. And that was uh, with Resident Evil 2. Uh, as well, but yes, Resident Evil 3 uh, does seem short. I'm only seven hours in, like I said, and I feel I'm getting pretty close to the end comparatively to the original. Uh, if they're 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 following kudos to the original, uh, so that's the only thing. It is short, but there's a lot of replayability uh, comparatively to number two, which also I'm streaming right right now as well on the streaming channel. Uh, there's a lot of replayability. Uh, you can play it in different modes. There, I, from my understanding, there is going to be some DLC for it, uh, at, just like Resident Evil 2, where they had Fourth Survivor and the Ghost Survivors. So, I think that there will be 
well enough content to quench uh, Resident Evil fans. And we're waiting for the announcement for what it's going to be next year, if it's going to be Resident Evil 8. Or, heck, I think they should go back and say, screw it, and remake number one. Even though we have a nice remake in uh, the GameCube Resident Evil 1 and Resident Evil 0, which is the prelude to that, because that is uh, Alpha Team, and then Bravo Team gets sent in once they lose contact. It's the prelude of what happened with Alpha Team and why shit hit the fan with them. Uh, with Rebecca Chambers, uh, who's the medic. I wasn't a big fan of her, never have been a big fan of her. Uh, the books were very good, too. Uh, if you ever read the books, uh, I think there's like six or seven of them. There's the Umbrella Conspiracy, Caliban's Cove. It's a couple of different ones. Remember, Rebecca was the hero in Caliban's Cove, and it was a decent book, but I just never liked her, never picked up on that character. Uh, the other review we're going to talk about is Pirate Warriors 4, uh, One Piece, Pirate Warriors 4, uh, love it, there's going to be a lot of replayability to it, not just on the dramatic story mode, which there's only six, uh, levels, which was kind of devastating to me, uh, I had found that out, I'm halfway through it, we just finished the Marine Ford Act, so they did, uh, what is it, Alabasta, Alabasta, and Nee's Lobby with Frankie, and the Marine Ford where Ace dies, and then the next three chapters are Dressrosa, Whole Cake Island, which wasn't on the previous one, and uh, Wayno, and they have the Wayno arc finished, but a original video game ending because they're, if you're a fan, uh, they have not finished the Wayno arc yet, not in the manga nor in the TV show. So, um, I think it's a great game, and I think if you're a Dynasty Warriors, Gundam Dynasty Warriors, Dynasty Warriors Orichi. Samurai Warriors, Hyrule Warriors, Fire Emblem Warriors, if you have played any of those warrior games uh, and you're an anime fan, especially a One Piece fan, uh, I, it's, it's, worth, it's worth the pickup, at least in my book. I, I, I enjoy it, and I have One Piece Pirate Warriors 3 also on the Switch, uh, which is great too because uh, Pirate Warriors 3 goes all the way up to Dress Rosa. Um, and does all the arcs, so you could play three and then play four, you know what I mean? But, it, you know, a lot of it is, I will say, on Pirate Warriors 4, a lot of it's just cleaned up and recycled footage from previous levels that they have done. Of course, Whole Cake and Wayno are new, Dressrosa is Dressrosa, and the other four, Alabasta and East Lobby and Marine Ford, obviously, they, they took recycled footage and cleaned it up. Um, and added a little new content to that, but also the free law, the, uh, free mode that they have and, uh, what is it? Free mode. And I think it's like adventure mode. If I remember correctly, I haven't played in a couple days. Uh, there's a lot of content, uh, that, that's still out there that you can do. Um, so I, I definitely, uh, this is Casca Kitty. I definitely would, uh, like I always say, check it out. Uh, good game, though. Good game. Uh, movie reviews. We're going to now move on to the movie section of the show. Uh, movie reviews. Uh, as you know, if you are into streaming or Amazon Prime or the Xbox Store, any of that, um, you'll know that... What are you doing? Yeah. Um, you'll know that, uh, there's a couple films that are out on straight digital release that are technically still supposed to be in theaters right now, but guess what? The theaters aren't open, so they've released it to us as the general public that you can buy some of these movies, uh, that are in theaters, meant to be in theaters. Uh, Bloodshot, uh, is one of them, uh, with Vin Diesel, and it is from a Valiant comic book from the 90s, uh, and Bloodshot, fantastic. Uh, my Mrs. Wolf even enjoyed it. Uh, uber violent, uber violent. But if you like Punisher or that dark, you know, Batman, uh, you like that that muddled gray area of what heroes are 
Bloodshot's your movie. That's all I'm going to say about it. Uh, Onward, and that's kind of a cub thing. Uh, Onward is the Disney movie voiced with Tom Holland, a.k.a. Spider-Man, and Chris Pratt, a.k.a. Star-Lord from the Marvel Universe, also owned by Disney. Uh, it, it, it's a great family slash kid movie with a lot of morals and values about family and about siblings and it's in a magical realm uh, if you enjoy elves and dwarves and goblins and orcs and dragons that's what this Disney movie is with those values and, uh, and wizards of course wizards uh, it, I, I enjoyed it thoroughly I uh, got a lot of bad reviews and a lot of bad press but I, I enjoyed it my daughter watches it at least once a day and has been for Cubs been watching it now once a day for the last six days <laughs> we got it like two weeks ago and the day that we got it she watched it like four times that day but uh, she loves it and uh, so you know if you're wondering for for your kids uh, is it another good, you know, smash hit for the kids like Frozen? I don't think it's on the level of Frozen, uh, but it's up there. And it's definitely, I would compare it to like Moana or Tangled or any of those other, you know, mo more recent CGI Disney movies. It's, de it's definitely worth checking out and it's definitely worth having in your collection if you have a kid or you're a Disney uh, fanatic. Uh, another movie very excited about, and I cannot wait for the sequel, Sonic the Hedgehog. I can't believe they made it work. Kudos to Jim Carrey as Dr. Robotnik. Uh, what's, it, what's his name? Oh, my goodness. Matthew Morrison, maybe that's it. Guy who played Cyclops is in it. In uh, and, and Sonic. Uh I don't want to reveal any of the story to you and how they made this work. And I can't believe they made it work. But it was an enjoyable, fun movie. It was an hour and 40-something minutes. Enjoyable, fun the whole way through. Great comedy, great action. You know, there's, there's, there's an emotional backstory to it. And we get to see hints, and I definitely watch the post credits because they set it up for the second one, and you get to see cameos and little jingle tunes and throwbacks if you're a Sonic the Hedgehog fan or played Sonic the Hedgehog, the originals back in the day. There's a lot of throwbacks to the original uh, games, so I, definitely uh, at least rent it. At least rent it if it's if you're able to rent it. We own it, but if you can rent it and you don't want to own it and you're iffy about it, it's okay. Um, other one, and I read the book when I was in school, and probably a lot of you did, Call of the Wild with Harrison Ford. And Call of the Wild was about a dog named Buck and his adventure, uh, you know, kind of after uh, Civil War era. Uh, and he's up in the... Uh, uh, Alaska, and it's, it's a story about the dog, it's not about the people, I mean, the people are, they're more the side characters, the dog is what it's about, and it's his story, and they made the movie work, where this dog doesn't even talk, the dog does not talk, Harrison Ford narrates, he's the narrator, and he's one of the characters that takes this dog in, called Buck, uh, and if you haven't read the book, Call of the Wild, or you have read the book, this is, this is a film that I feel will be one of those films that they show at school. You know, it's one of those staple films. Like me growing up, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory was like the go-to for my generation if it was movie day at school. Nine times out of ten, it was Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Um, or Mighty Ducks. You know, it's one of those movies where I can see it being like that. It's very heartfelt very deep if you're an animal lover animal activist uh it's it's a great adventure and, and that's the best way i can put it it is an adventure as as was the book but the the they did so well i think transferring it in, in into film and serialization uh the, the other one i'm gonna review uh last movie i'm gonna review is one piece stampede 
uh, hands down, I think what we're up to 10, 11 One Piece movies now, something like that. Hands down, the best One Piece movie. I'm not going to reveal anything about it other than all the pirates culminate on this island and it's supposed to be a big top secret. And there is a chest there that has the log pose, which if you don't know what the log pose is, is they are wristbands with a compass that points to specific islands or the next island going along the Grand Line because the, the, it, the sea is a mystery and you have to have these log poses in order to navigate the Grand Line or you won't make it. You'll get lost. Um, but supposedly the treasure, and it's a competition between all the pirates who gets the treasure first in the treasure chest, it is the log pose that points directly to Gold D. Rogers' one piece the treasure that everybody is trying to get and uh, i'm just gonna leave it at that but man the animation the story the villain i that was the best one piece movie uh and i enjoyed one piece gold like next to one piece gold stampede blows it out of the water and gold gold was my favorite but stampede Hands down is now my number one. Gold is number two. But uh, Stampede, One Piece fan or anime fan at all, check it out. It's uh, it's it's worth your while. Uh, moving on, we're just going to talk briefly about sports. If you guys don't know, I'm a mega Pittsburgh Steelers fan. I'm born and raised from Pittsburgh. I love Pittsburgh. Uh, if you like a different team, that's okay. I don't care. Just do, we don't we don't talk crap. You know what I mean? I don't, at least. Um, you know, I know my fan base and, and other fan bases, you know, you like to bicker back and forth. It's all good fun. I like competitive conversation, but, you know, I'm not uh, I'm not going to sit there and bicker and say your team's trash and my team's trash. It's nothing like that. I love the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm born and raised from Pittsburgh. It's just how it is. Uh, but we're talking about the NFL, and supposedly yesterday, Donald Trump uh, officially said on the on the record that he guarantees that there will be an NFL season this year. That NFL will go on regardless of whether we're still locked down or not. I don't know how that's going to work, and I can't even imagine if we're still locked down by then and, and what, what the hell is going to be going on. Uh, but, I mean, that is a, a, a positive thing that we're going to get a little bit of a pastime uh, for people to enjoy. And plus, I'm a, I'm a uh, with my brother... Uh, Jimmy, uh, we're now season ticket holders and licensed season ticket holders. So I hope that there's an NFL season and I hope that it's not like WrestleMania part one from last night where there was no audience that I just, that was so unbearable. Oh, I, I, I was sweating through the whole thing. Just being like, is this real life? <laughs> like, is this really happening right now? Hey, get down. She likes she 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 likes to be the center of attention. She's our rescue kitty. We got her at a week and a half old. The mother abandoned her in a bush, and we bottle fed her and nursed her back to health. And she wants to be nosy right now, but this is Casca. She's named after uh, Guts's girlfriend from Berserk. You'll see her in a lot of the a lot of the footage. She wants to eat my hair ties right now. She's being a goofball. Okay. Are you done? I see you. You're right there. <laughs> you going to let me get you or are you going to run? What are you going to do? You don't know what you're doing. You're looking back and forth like, I don't know what to do. Don't bite on my camera. <laughs> You see all that hair? That's from the other cat, my dad's cat. Uh, he was passed. That's Kiki. Uh, but see, I'm getting off topic here. Uh, so anyways, like I said, Trump's guaranteeing that the NFL is going to be going on. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I, I don't know. But hopefully, because like I said, I'm a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. Uh, and this is the first season that I'm a licensed uh, season ticket holder. And go figure, coronavirus happens. So hopefully, uh, because they're really good seats too. I'm like eight rows back from the sideline. So, or end zone, end zone, sorry. Corner of the end zone. So, 
uh, I've never had the opportunity in 33 years of my life, and I've been a fan since I could remember, like six, seven years old. Um, but anyways, uh, that, that's all I got for today in sports. Um, not, nothing else really other than TB12 went to Tampa, you know, TB in Tampa, TB and TB. Um, Next thing I'm going to talk about is my streams. Okay, so if it is an Xbox title, I will be streaming here on Mixer. If it is a PlayStation or Nintendo Switch title, I will be streaming on my YouTube channel, which my YouTube channel, if you're watching on Mixer, you know that my Mixer title is Lone Wolf and Cubs 17. Uh, it's not Lone Wolf and Cubs 17 on YouTube. It's just Lone Wolf and Cub. Capital L, space, capital W, all lowercase, and capital C, cub. Lone Wolf and Cub. Um, so, hopefully, uh, got a little distorted there. Thank you, Darth, for the, uh, for the auto host. Greatly appreciate it. Um, but anyways, uh, I want to give that information to you guys to clarify a little better. Uh, I, I do promo cut. I will continue to promo cut until I fail at this or I just give up or we're successful with this. And if we're successful with this, I'll be promo cutting every day. And so, you know, uh, what I'm talking about is, is probably about two, three times a week. At least I do a minute or less promo video drop on what I'm doing on the streaming channel or upcoming on the podcast. Um, or, you know, just saying hi to everybody and saying stop by. Uh, but anyways, uh, upcoming streams that we have going on. Final Fantasy VII Remake. Midnight. Thursday. Going into Friday. 12.01 a.m. Friday. We will be, be premiering on YouTube, on the channel, live. Final Fantasy VII Remake. Uh, this is huge for me. That was the first RPG other than Chrono Trigger that I ever played. And Pokemon, I think it was Pokemon. But yeah, Pokemon Red was the first Pokemon I ever played. But I stayed at a friend of mine. Uh, his name was Ryan. And he, he had an N60. He had a lot of nice stuff. I, I didn't grow up having... After my mother passed, my grandparents definitely spoiled me. But before my mother passed growing up, I didn't have a lot of stuff. You know, we just didn't financially we weren't we weren't set like that uh but he had an n64 and i remember playing shadows of the empire on n64 star wars game and his dad went to work and he was like come on we can go play the playstation and i went through his dad's playstation collection and uh, he had this game called final fantasy 7 and that was my introduction to final fantasy 7 i fell in love with it i was like so enamored at, at this game i was like what what is all this you know i've never what, what what do you mean level up what is this uh and then you know liking final fantasy uh so much at that point now i had a ps1 at my father's house my parents were split i had a super nintendo at my house but playstation at my dad's uh, and so I was like, I, you know, what type of game I started doing the research, reading magazines, old game pro magazine, um, and electronic monthly or whatever it was called. It used to be called electronic game monthly or something. Uh, anyways, I got Chrono Trigger, which is made. The character models are made from an anime creator, well-known Akira toriyama -san. Uh, who is the creator of Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, and Dr. Slump. Um, and now the Galactic Patrol. Uh, he has that uh, side story going on now. Uh, but anyways, very excited about this. I've waited since 1997. <laughs> uh, I, I actually been waiting since PS3 because PS3, they said they were going to do a remake because on PSP... They did uh, Crisis Core or play? No, it wasn't PSP. It was PlayStation Vita. They did Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core, which was the gap to fill in about Zach, who, you know, Cloud and him do a little switch out 
uh, and you know, Cloud takes on his memories and and all that. But it's the backstory. But when that initially released, that was just supposed to lead into the remake of Final Fantasy VII. Because also a year or so before that time, we had Final Fantasy VII Advent Children, the movie, come out, which is after the events of Final Fantasy VII. And the return of the the Geo Stigma and the return of Sephiroth and his uh, former shells or failed shells of him himself experimentations. Uh, so, a uh, very excited. It'll be out midnight. That's April tenth, twelve oh one. Final Fantasy Seven remake on YouTube, and that is Lone Wolf and Cub. That is the channel. Um, and, or you can just, if you're watching this on YouTube, when I upload it, you'll know where to go, where to look. And it'll be streaming live. And I, I, depending on how tired, I'm going to try and get a decent amount of sleep because my wife is off that day. Uh, Mrs. Wolf's off that day. So uh, I will definitely be trying to be caught up on sleep so we can get a good first premiere stream in. Uh, other things that I'm going to be streaming throughout this week from Sunday until then, uh, we have Persona 5 Royal. I'll still be running that. Uh, it's a massive JRPG. It is the second edition of the game with a lot more content, a new character, new new jobs that you can do in the game because you're a high school student. And of course, you have to have a job in order to make money in the game. Uh, so I'll be streaming that on uh on YouTube, and uh, as for Xbox, I've got quite a list. Uh, I know I said I was always going to be anime anytime, all the time. Uh, it's getting a little harder because there, I thought there was more anime games on Xbox like PlayStation, but there's actually a lot less on Xbox compared to PlayStation. Uh, but we're making it work. It's still pop culture. It's still stuff that I know about and I'm knowledgeable in. Uh, but we will be doing Ancestors, which I just got this morning. I'm confused as heck, so bear with me on that one. That is about making the lineage. You're a chimpanzee, and you evolve all the way to a human over a 10 million year period. Uh, and you build multiple generations, and you keep evolving your race until eventually you become a human. Um, Pirate Warriors 4, we're halfway through, so we'll definitely be taking a couple of chips and chinks at that. Uh, One Piece World Seeker, we may hop on that on and off. Uh, I, I believe we're about a fourth of the way through the game. It's a decent sized game. It's about a 25, 28 hour game. And we do have the first DLC with that as well. So uh, there's still going to be good amount of content uh, for that game on my channel uh, until that'll be gone. Resident Evil Resistance. Um, which I will review on the next episode because there's a lot of patches and a lot of updates that they need to do. Uh, Resident Evil Resistance, which if you don't know, that came with Resident Evil 3. It is the online. It's four versus one, uh, you know, survivor versus one mat, four survivors versus one mastermind who's trying to kill you. You got to get through three levels and, and get the hell out of there. Uh, so I'll be playing that online. Another one, uh, four, uh, four v four PVP. Uh, Bleeding Edge, I've uh, been pretty successful with that this, thus far, I feel I'm pretty comfortable, I have a solid character that I like, uh, I need to figure out a backup character, because uh, just in case somebody selects my character, but uh, awesome game, that will be streaming uh, throughout the week, um, on top of that, uh, we have Naruto uh, Ultimate Ninja Warrior 4, or Ultimate Ninja 4, uh, Road to Baruto, uh, which I just got this morning by request by the fans and the community. They want to see some Naruto on the channel, so we got some Naruto now. Uh, another one, near Automata, which I played the original on PlayStation 2, uh, and it's on Xbox Game Pass right now, and it's the God uh, Gods Among Us edition or something like that. Or not Gods Among Us, that's uh, Injustice, what am I thinking? Gods becoming becoming as gods, I think, edition, uh, and that's on Xbox Game Pass. So I'll be streaming that as well, and it's in the anime realm, uh, and it's a very Japanese uh, action adventure game. Uh, of course, we'll have Resident Evil three and two, and what I've been doing with Resident Evil three and two is we are literally teetering back and forth on Resident Evil two and three because I have it set up to where they're right at the linear points of where they meet. 
in both games, like the events are going on at the same time, which it took me a little bit of research to figure that out. Uh, but it, that, that is cool. And then the other thing, and I will be doing it tonight with a buddy of mine, Boris the Blade. Uh, uh, Boris the Blade and I will be co-streaming uh, Sniper Elite 4, uh, which is also an Xbox Game Pass game. Uh, and if you don't know from previous streams, Boris is the one that I streamed with beating Gears, uh, Gears of War 5 on the streaming channel. Uh, so those are the titles that will be going on this week on the streaming channel. Sorry, you, you know, I'm sure you see uh, my list here. I had to go off of it because there's such a big uh, amount of content that's going to be coming in the next week and two weeks here. Uh, and then, uh, well, you know, uh, once again, I hope you all are staying safe. I hope you guys are practicing your social distancing. Uh, try and stay from going out in the public very nasty virus very contagious uh and i want to give a shout out uh darth is actually auto hosting me right now a shout out to a streamer both streamers on mixer and that is darth teddy bear and that is all caps d4 r t h underscore t e d d y b b e 4 r all caps uh, and the fours are obviously the number fours. And then I, uh, my other boy, uh, X Chronic X Grime X, which is lowercase X Chronic with a capital C, lowercase X Grime, capital G R I M E, and then lowercase X. Check those guys out. Check my buddies out. I would appreciate you guys. If you enjoy this content, you'll enjoy their content on their streaming channel. And also, Darth has a YouTube as well. And you can uh, search him. I believe there's just no underscore. Uh, but you can search him as well. He has a YouTube channel and he does Absolver. If you like Absolver, he has a lot of Absolver custom YouTube videos, which are pretty cool. I, actually, I want him to teach me how to do the editing on that. Uh, which I'll be, you know, the show will get better as the time goes on. If you guys continue to show the support that you've been showing, I'll continue mm -hmm. to upgrade uh, the show as we go along and we continue to uh, evolve as the, in the community and as a show. Um, but just remember, uh, be kind, uh, you know, to your fellow YouTubers, your fellow streamers, you know, it's good to do, have constructive criticism, but we don't go on here. It's not about bashing people, making fun of people. That's not what this is all about. It's about being a community and being there for each other, especially now and what's going on in the world. Everybody needs to be supportive of each other and have each other's backs because we're all in this together. We're human beings and... It, like I said earlier, it doesn't matter about race, religion, creed, sexual orientation. A virus does not care. And we need to stick together on this. And just be kind. Be kind to your fellow streamer. Be kind to your fellow YouTubers. And be kind to your fellow man. And uh, and work together. But that is the closure of uh, Lone Wolf and Cub Variety Show, Episode 2, The Attack of the Pulp Cultures. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be uploading this now on the YouTube. Uh, I was live streaming it as, as I did last episode. I uh, appreciate the uh, feedback on the threads, everyone. And uh, if you enjoy the video, uh, you know, on the YouTube channel, uh, click like, leave a message in the comment board, and subscribe. I hope you have a wonderful day, and episode three will be dropping sometime next week. We may do a double episode feature next week, and maybe have a guest appearance by Darth or Chronic. I'll have to talk to them about that and see if we can maybe work something out. But it's all I got for you. We're out of time, and remember, be there or be square.